Congratulations to those people who have taken GCSEs and have got their results today. The results seem to be, for the most part, very good. The, there's a slight drop in the results in independent schools. That's partly because the international GCSEs haven't yet come in, probably. And there's quite a lot of international GCSEs um, across the independent school intake. So that would um, uh, that, that, that would probably account for that. But it is tremendous that schools in uh, or, or ordinary schools, ordinary schools have done so well. Slightly more worrying that there's been a fall in the standards in grammar schools. And certainly uh, having gone into schools after the pandemic, I was quite shocked by the standard of teaching and I think we've got slightly too obsessed with box ticking and with handing out well, with handing out handouts. I think there's too many handouts being handed out and not enough brain work being done. It's something very interesting. If you go back to uh, the time of Cicero, uh, Cicero, uh, of course, didn't depend on writing things down. He depended on remembering things because writing things down was tiresome and costly. And so Cicero used memory techniques which fell into uh, decay with the 16th century, 15th century arrival of the printed book, where you could just reach up and grab a book. You didn't need to remember the stuff. You knew vaguely where it was kept and where it had been written down. But it's always good to try to remember things, which is why it's so important to start remembering things when you're very young, which is why subjects like Latin and Greek are so good when they are taught young. And <laughs> no one's going to speak Latin and Greek unless you go and live in the Vatican. Uh, but Latin and Greek give you a really good training in remembering the mechanics of language, for example, and also a really good training in developing the vocabulary. So if you've done Latin and Greek, you will know that the fifth declension noun for octopus, the plural of that, would, would be octopodi. It, it, it simply wouldn't be a sort of clever question. It would be simply something that you know because you, you, you learnt it when you were seven or eight years old, as I did. Uh, and it's, it's something that remains with you for life. And I, I'm I'm I, I'm simply sorry that when I went to when 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 I went to school I wasn't um I I, I wasn't uh, taught Greek on a routine basis. Uh, I'd learnt a lot of it beforehand, and I patched it up later. And it's one of the best things I ever did. Uh, similarly, other ancient languages which are not necessarily uh, widely circulated, um, uh, ancient Syriac for example, which was, which is basically Aramaic. It's a language that Jesus used. Hebrew, slightly more useful because it's, uh, you, you, you can get it in, uh, in, in the synagogue in Shul on a, on, on, on a Sam, on Saturday morning, uh, Shabbos. But, uh, and modern Greek, of course, is a development of ancient Greek and Byzantine Greek. And they're, they're both different to Attic Greek. But anyway, enough of language. Where does all this memory stuff come from? Because uh, if you were to look at Sherlock, the television series, you get the impression that it's all to do with memory palaces, which indeed it is. And Sherlock has his own memory palace. Some of the ancient Greeks talked about a memory street. Um, but ultimately, it goes back to one particular person who was invited to a dinner party. And the, the host didn't like what he'd done. He was a poet. Uh, Simonides um, of Chios and uh, the host didn't like what he'd done and uh, the poet was told he wasn't going to be paid properly and he left the meal to talk to two people who were outside who oddly were not there and the moment he got outside the dining room the entire building collapsed and everybody who'd been sitting at the dinner table listening to his poetry died and Simonides was asked if he could help identifying the bodies that were badly mangled. I mean, he would be very useful at the moment, wouldn't he, in Russia, just north of Moscow. And Simon Ethers had a system of remembering all the people around the table when he was reciting his poetry to them. And he remembered the people by name 
because of where they sat. And so he was able to identify all these badly destroyed bodies simply because he knew where they had been sitting. And this developed into the uh, loci, or loki, uh, not the god, uh, approach to memory. You learn things by thinking of them in a particular place. Now, I uh, have spent years learning things by putting bits of paper and um, and leaving books in particular places around the house. Unfortunately, my partner has a habit of tidying them up, which drives me almost insane because I cannot remember what book was where. I cannot remember what the book was. I just know that there was something that I placed there, which, uh, if I saw it, would immediately recall its contents. And so it drives me insane when things get moved because I have no, I, 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 my, my memory is based on their location. I can do it in a smaller way by drawing things on a piece of paper and, and I can sort of remember where they are on the piece of paper. In that sense, I have a very visual memory. Judy Dench says that when she's thinking of a piece of Shakespeare, she can see it on the page in front of her. She can remember what side of the paper it was on. I have, I, I have a similar sort of recall. But unless I know what it is I'm trying to remember, I cannot remember it at all. I, 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 simply, I, I have no memory for what people tell me. None at all. I have to write it down. If I write it down and I put it somewhere special, I will eventually remember what it is by going to that special place. Either in my mind, which is not so easy now because there's so many special places, or physically. And this is a version of Simonides' Uh, memory trick and it is a memory trick and I think we are not training the memories of children in schools people are too obsessed with this thing and you can't remember anything on this because it's got nothing to remember every single page looks identical which is one of the reasons I don't really like Kindle and one of the reasons I don't remember anything that I've read on Kindle um, or indeed audio I, I simply don't remember what somebody has said to me on audio books so I've tried I've tried listening to audio books and if I don't drift to sleep while I'm listening I cannot I still cannot remember at what point I've stopped and what point I start again I, I need to be able to see the thing on the page I don't mind an audio book while I'm reading actually I don't and I don't mind actually listening to one audio book and reading another. Uh, that seems to work as well as long as I'm turning a page. And but I think um, when when I talk to students uh, and I talk to them about memory, they've got very good memories for things like computer games where they're actively involved with this sort of thing. But they've got very bad memories for anything which is purely passive, and listening is purely passive. And I think texting is purely passive and you, you, you've got to be engaged in order to remember because of, because of this extraordinary thing that um, memory seems to be about order and about location. And if you get those two things right, then the world is your oyster and you will remember everything. And you, you may not remember where everything is but you will remember everything when prodded it, it, memory is about prodding and uh, you shouldn't try and uh, Sherlock Holmes actually Sh Sherlock Holmes does talk about memory at one point in the original books in a study in Scarlet he says my mind is like an attic and uh, it, it, it's got some furniture in it but I choose what furniture I I put there or, or words to that effect um, he doesn't talk about a memory palace. That has been imposed on the Sherlock story by the people who reinvented Sherlock for the Cumberbatch version. So there we are. Memory GCSEs, but general congratulations and commiserations to those who didn't quite get what they wanted. But you can always to retake, but or you can invest your focus, you can focus on um, A-levels and really prove how brilliant you are now. Um, but for the most part, I think it's congratulations all round, isn't it?